<clears throat> I want us to consider something very briefly. Around the power of prayer and praise. The power of prayer and praise. Acts chapter 16 verse 22. The Bible says the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison. <clears throat> and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received his orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Now just imagine if, uh, you, you know, these brethren were claustrophobic. But the Bible says, ha, about midnight, the King James Version says about the midnight hour, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. <clears throat> And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for light, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour, the night of the jail, at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The, day, the jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe his God, in God, he and his whole household. <clears throat> now, if we can follow, in fact, let me just pray first, amen. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you that it is blessed. And that, Lord, it will minister to our hearts in a very profound manner. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can everybody say amen? Amen. If you can follow um, the story quite closely, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, Paul and Silas had tried to go and preach the gospel to, you know, different areas. And the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. Uh, they tried again to go to Asia, Spirit of Jesus did not permit them to go. And the Bible says that in a dream, Paul saw uh, a man, a Macedonian man, who said, please come and help us. And the Bible says that at that moment, Paul understood that it must be that God is calling them to uh, Macedonia, Philippi. And the Bible says that uh, Paul went to uh, Philippi in Macedonia <clears throat> and when he got there, he ministered the gospel to a lady by the name of Lydia. And the Bible says that she came to faith and then she took them in. She was a dealer in purple cloth. And immediately thereafter, they began to minister and they were being followed by a certain woman who kept on saying that these are men of God. And the Bible tells us that Paul became vexed in spirit and he cast out the demon that it possessed him. Now, the Bible tells that when the owners, the handlers realized that they could not make any money from her, they started a riot. And as a result of that, Paul and Silas were arrested and that's where we picked it up. At verse 23 where they said, after they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jail was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received his orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stock. But listen to this. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. 
Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. I, I, I want to minister around you know, the whole concept of the power of praise and worship. Because think about it. Um, Paul and Silas were very much within the will of God. They had gone to exactly the place where they felt that the Spirit of the Lord had led them to. And the Bible says that they ministered the gospel. And not only that, they carried out the will of God in the sense that they cast out a devil out of a woman who had been bound uh, by the spirit of divination. But the Bible says in the midst of all that, people who had made money out of all that witchcraft started a riot, they started a riot, and as a result of that, these people were put into prison. Now, think about it this way. How would you feel to be put into a prison knowing fully well that you have carried out the will of God? Sure. Think about it. Many of us would go into such a time of complaining. Many of us would be depressed. But the Bible says that Paul and Silas carried a different spirit. The Bible says that about the midnight hour, now, what I'm, I, 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 I don't quite understand is, was it their habit that around the midnight hour, they said to themselves, you know what, we need to pray, we need to praise, we need to, we need to lift up our hands to God. I, I don't know if that was the case. But the Bible says around the midnight hour, they began to pray and they began singing hymns to God and other prisoners were listening to them. Can I say this, Basalwan? The world is watching us during this season. And they are looking at how we are going to react to what's happening around us. And, and, and the question that I want to ask uh, to us is, what sound are they going to hear from us? Sure. Because they are listening to us. So your praise, your prayer life is not just for you. It's for those around you. They are listening in. And the Bible says that this man, instead of complaining, instead of crying out to God, saying, God, I'm going through a season where I don't want to talk to you. They are going closer to God. They are spraying. They are praising. They are singing hymns to God. And, you know, as a point, I would say to you that in this season, make it your mission to go deep in terms of prayer. Make it your mission to go deep in terms of praise. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 34 that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The psalmist wrote in Psalms 103, the bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name and forget not all of his benefits. He who forgives our sins, heals our diseases. He who redeems our lives from the pit and crowns us with tender mercy and loving kindness. He who feeds our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like that of an eagle. Now, I want to say to you, be in the habit of praying the word of God. Be in the habit of living a lifestyle of praise and worship. Sing hymns unto God. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians? It says that do not get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. And then it goes on to say the very characteristics of someone who's going to be filled. Singing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. So for us, one of the ways that we're going to show that we are filled with the Spirit of God is that when you put us in the midst of a dungeon, we will still praise Him. It, it is important, ladies and gentlemen, that whatever that arrests you does not arrest your praise. Amen. I'm reminded of Habakkuk chapter 3. If I'm not mistaken, where it says, even though, even though there, there are no grapes on the vines, even though there, 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 there are no grooves on the olive, even though there's no cattle in the stall, even though there's no sheep in the pen, I will rejoice in the Lord and I will be joyful in God my Savior. You see, there are seasons where it is important not only to praise Him because of, but you need to praise Him in spite of. In spite of the lack, in spite of the anxiety, in spite of the lockdown, you need to make it a mission that says, this is not a lockdown, this is a lock-in. It's an opportunity for me to be locked in with God. I'm locked out from the world, but I'm locked in with God. 
Now the Bible tells us that Paul and Silas began to pray. And they began to sing hymns unto God. Don't just praise, also pray. Learn about the different types of prayers in the seasons. The Bible in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, it talks about how God wants us to pray, to make intercessions for all people. It talks about making our prayers. It talks about making intercessions. And it talks about thanksgivings. Learn about the different types of prayers and begin to pray them. Make declarations. And in the midst of that, you need to enter into a lifestyle of praise and worship. Amen. Now the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, says that they were singing, right? They were praying to God. They were singing hymns unto God. There was no worship team. There was no good sound. There was no microphones. They had chains on their feet. But even in the midst of that, they were saying, I will still praise them. You know, the problem with us is that we need some strings in order for us to worship. The problem with us is that we need an echo for us to worship. The problem with us is that we need YouTube to help us to worship Him. But God is raising up a generation that is just going to say, when I think about what the Lord has done, I cannot keep my mouth shut. When I reflect and see where God has taken me from, when I reflect and see see what he did for me on Calvary I can't but declare that God is good and his mercy endures forever Amen. now the Bible says that they were singing hymns unto God but the other prisoners were listening to him can, now, can I just say to him that we are not singing to people you know the problem with us is that we only want to sing if people are listening in sing to God and people will listen Amen. now another thing that I want us to understand is that they were not even singing it unto the chains in other words, their praise and their worship was not aimed at the chains that were binding them. Their, their praise and their worship was aimed at God. Yeah, yeah. But it's amazing. Yeah. When we aim our praise to God, our praise will hit the people around us and it will hit the chains that are binding us as well. Amen. Come on. Amen. Listen to this. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake. That the foundations of the prison were shaken. It was not because the music was too loud. It was because the Bible says God in heaven, the praises of Israel. God was gate crashing this particular party. Can I say something? It is a very, very possible that you can start a praise party during this season that will attract the heavens themselves. I can just see God saying, I hear you, Sherubim. I hear you, Seraph. But someone is praising me down there. I need to attend that. I want to make this statement that praise is an invitation that God cannot turn down. Hey, come on. Yeah. The Bible tells us, listen to this. Suddenly there was a a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Their praise and their worship was not aimed at the doors. Their praise and their worship was not aimed at their chains. Their praise and their worship was aimed at God. But the consequences were broken chains, were doors that were opened. Can I just say this to somebody this evening? Your praise has consequences. Sure. And the Bible says, listen to this. It says not only were their doors open, but the doors of everyone around them were also open. What if I said that your praise and worship can act as a catalyst in this season for a type of revival that has never been known unto men? Can you be a type of person who instead of complaining, who instead of face spreading fake news, is declaring that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever? Can you wake up and say the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Can you wake up and say he is the bright and morning star. He is the lily in the valley. He is the rose of the Sharon. He is the root and the offspring of David. Come on somebody. In the midst of all such a time that we have gone through, we need a people who are going to say, my praise cannot be locked down. Come on somebody. My worship cannot be locked down. My prayer life cannot be locked down. In 
In fact, now I'm going to have enough time to praise him. I'm going to have enough time to worship him. Come on, they cannot lock down your praise. Amen. Yes. What if your complex is in need of your praise? What if your estate is in need of your praise? What if this country is in need of a praise? You see, ladies and gentlemen, there is a type of praise that cannot be kept into one place. It just overflows. It just overflows. And it has consequences to it. And the consequences will be this. Broken chains and open doors. Hey, come on. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, to him who is holy and true, he holds the key of David. What he opens, no man can shut. Yes. And what he shuts, no man can open. Yes. What is the key of David? Mm. It's the key of praise and worship. Yeah. Mm. Can I submit to us that, you know, what we need in this season is, a, you know, a people who are, I want to say, I'm going to praise God no matter what. Yeah. It's a people who are going to be very disciplined and delighted in their praise and worship. It's going to be a people who are going to make it their staple diet to praise them. It's a people who are going to say, I will not shut my mouth. You see, ladies and gentlemen, they had put chains on the feet of Paul and Silas. They had locked them up, but they forgot to put that tape on their mouth. Can I just say to somebody, they might have shut everything, shut every door, but if they've not shut your mouth, they have shut nothing because you still have your mouth to give him the name. Oh my God, to give him praise to give him the fruit of your lips which is your praise and worship I don't know what door has been closed I don't know what chain has been fastened but if you still have your mouth you still have the key to your breakthrough South Africa needs your praise you might not be able to sing in church you might not be able to have someone lead you in worship you might not have a motif a Roland, a stage note but you have your lips therefore I dare you to give him the fruit of your lips and the Bible says, the jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. I believe that one of the things that the Lord wants to address in this season is the spirit of suicide. Yeah. Oh. Don't harm yourself. We are all here. Don't harm yourself. We are all here. But how did they get to this? How did they get to this? They got to this because there were two people who said, I'm going to praise God anyway. Yeah. You know, this thing always really, it leaves me in somewhat of a shock. He thought everyone had escaped and he was about to kill himself. Have you ever been in a place where it looks like everyone is getting their breakthrough except you? And for many people, that is the very thing that brings about depression. But God is saying, don't harm yourself. Yeah. We are all here. Yeah. In this season, if you are struggling with mental sicknesses, may you know that someone is there. Yeah. May you know that someone is here. May you know that someone cares. May you know that someone is praying for you. May you know that someone is counting on you yeah. to leave. Yeah. May you know that your existence in this world matters. May you know that whatever has happened to you is not your conclusion. It's your condition. May you know that God still has a plan and a purpose for your life. Don't harm yourself. We are all here. We are all here. Don't harm yourself. Don't take away your life. I know it's lonely. I know that you have not been promoted at a time where you thought you were going to be. I know you're not married yet. We are all here. I, I, I know you have not been promoted yet, but we are all here. I know that you have not spoken to your family in a while, but we are all here. I know that the shift in the markets has really affected you, but we are all here. Don't harm yourself. <laughs> the jailer called for lights rushed in and fell trembling before Paul. You see, light speaks of perspective. When you choose to leave, there'll be a new perspective. Yeah, 
The lights were switched on. Oh wow, my life is actually not that bad. Amen. And the Bible says he came trembling. And this is one of the things I really see God doing in this season. <laughs> says, what must I do to be saved? For too long, we've been asking people to get saved. But what I foresee in this season is that people, Shakare Boko, will say, says, what must I do to be saved? I see your neighbor, the one who's been playing loud music, annoying the living daylights out of you, coming in to knock, sir, Mashekete, what must I do to be saved? Oh my goodness, friends, that you have been praying for for years. People you have given our family members. I see them calling in this season. Say, sir, my goodness, madam, what must I do to be saved? We are going to have that self-imposed altar calls. And people who are saying, I want it by myself. I don't need some strings. I don't need you to twist my arm. I'm desperate for God. I'm trembling. I need an encounter with the living God. They replied, listen to this. Not a one hour message. Believe in the Lord Jesus. And you will be saved. Yeah. You and your household. Yes. In other words, one of the things that we're going to see in this season, we're going to see household encounters, household transformations. We're going to see an entire family coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. The Bible says that in the book of Exodus, it says that when they, they killed the firstborn, there was a sound of cries. There were cries everywhere because the sons had been killed. But I want to tell you something. There's a new sound that is going to be released during this season. It's people crying out and saying, I have had an encounter with the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately, he and all his household were baptized. The very same person who had had Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas led them to the Lord. What if God is creating a door for us in this season? for us to even reach out to those who have hurt us. Yeah. Yeah. What if we're stepping into such a season? Sure. Let's switch on the light. Let's get a new perspective. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole household. Oh, man. We are going to see such a mess conversion of souls in this season. There are people who are going to be crying out, saying, I need an encounter with God. Come on, can we just pray today? Let's just pray in the Spirit. Come on, just be to You are seated at the right hand of the Father. You are holy, the holy. You are holy. Lamb of God, you are seated at the right.
Your kids, the Lord is releasing them in the name of Jesus. 